So June is an exciting month because you can get loads of stuff grown out in the garden, which means there's a lot of things you can be direct sowing out there. As well, obviously, as the things you've already sown and brought on can be planted out. So I've already started doing a lot of that this month and there's going to be more going on. Um, that was kind of my plans for today. However, they have been scuppered by the weather because for the last few days we've just had ridiculous winds. Yep, so... <sighs> Those of you who know me know that I don't have a fancy potting shed or anything like that. Um, I usually set up a table in the garden and work there, which is obviously not going to be possible today because it is mental windy. But I have been doing loads and loads already. So, so obviously, as you guys know, I've been following what's called a succession sowing or succession planting plan. So I do want to do a big update with you guys because we're in June now. So that's kind of halfway through the year, if you like. I want to tell you how I've been finding it and all that kind of stuff. So the next video is going to be me talking specifically about all of that stuff. OK, but for just now, then there's obviously this is why I mentioned that there are obviously things I have been sowing all along and you guys have been with me on the journey. And there are things that I sow at certain points of the year and not at others. So for today, June then, what is happening in June? Well, the things that I have been growing all along that I'm going to be growing more of. So that is things like I'll be direct sowing some more carrots. I've already got two rows of carrots out in my raised bed. I've got one row of purple haze, which actually I don't. I've got half a row because we've already used some. And I've got a row of Amsterdam forcing. So I'm going to get another row direct sown out there because that will then give me the late carrots that I want later on in the season. You could also do this with your beetroot. Um, I'm not going to because we've got pretty much no space left at the moment, which is one of the big issues. Because, you know, it's a small, I've got a small amount of growing space, so I can't do everything I want. But I've got a couple of rows of beetroot going great in the bed for just now. So I'm probably not going to be able to get another direct sow of that this month so that I can have a late crop of beetroot. But swings and roundabouts, that's how things go. Now, the other two things that I do a lot of that you guys know we love is our greens for cooking and our greens for generally eating like salad greens. So, at the moment, I have got one lamb's lettuce left, which is probably going to get used today in a salad. So I need to get some more going. I've got one going in here. Yep, yeah, yeah, look, just the one. Hang on. Where is he? Uh, yeah, just the one. Uh, so this little guy... Who else does this? Does that thing? You can't pick a plant up without checking it to see if it's got aphids or white fly or whatever. I've got a real nightmare with white fly and aphids in the greenhouse just now. Uh, do -do -do -do. So yeah, anyway, I've got one lamb's lettuce, so I need to get some more of them sown and get that done today, hopefully. Um, and I've got some gem lettuce already out in the beds. Um, so I'll talk to you about that in a second. The other salad -y things we're doing, and again, it's this learning as we go. I have been sowing cut and come again lettuces. Can you hear this wind? Cut and come again lettuces and pea shoots and beetroot for leaves all right through. And what we've discovered is the beetroot for leaves, we're not using as many of those as we thought we would. So I'm not going to sow any more of those. But the pea shoots I do love and the cut and come again little lettuce leaves are awesome. So I'm going to get some more of those going. Probably get them sown this weekend as well. The other thing that I haven't sown or grown any of so far, but I'm going to get them done this weekend, is spinach. Now, I already have perpetual spinach growing in the garden. That I use as a green for cooking. I don't really like it when it's a young leaf for putting in salads and stuff. Not really my thing. But hey, I was just trying it this year, first time trying it. So I'm going to get some normal spinach going. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to direct sow that out in the bed that currently has the courgettes in there. Because I'm hoping it should be quite a quick crop, which means I can grow it and be harvesting it before those courgettes really get to a decent size in that bed. Because 
If you guys follow along, you will know I'm way behind on my courgettes because the first lot just didn't take. So I'm about six weeks behind on where I would normally be with my courgettes. But I got them planted out into the bed just last week, I think it was. Um, and they're now in place. <laughs> Next job is in this bed and it's the courgettes. I'm way behind this month, as you guys know, because my first lot of sones just didn't take. So I've got teeny little plants to put out, which is why I've been holding off putting them out. Um, but hopefully this will be it. I'm going to put cloches on them just in case. But they're going out into this bed and you saw me just taking labels because this bed got decimated. I suspect by flea beetles. I had lots of pak choy and stuff in this bed and over the course of two days, gone, all of it. <sighs> it was destined for the courgettes anyway. So that's what we're doing now. I disappeared because I had to get a couple of pots. I'll explain in a sec. Okay. I finally ended up with three courgettes. Like I say, they are not massive. And because they spent so long in little pots, they're just looking a bit pale and horrible. They really need to get in the soil. I'm a bit wary about whether it's going to be nice and warm for the next few days, so I'm going to put cloches on them just in case. But these are courgette greenbush, deliberately chosen because they're apparently a bit of a smaller plant, so about 35 centimetre in diameter, um, which I'm hoping should fit a bit better in this bed. The idea being between the two plants gives me a little bit of planting space. So these are going to get planted and I'll show you what I'm doing with the pots. So courgettes are thirsty, hungry little plants. They need a lot of water and a lot of food in the soil, nutritious soil or feeding if you don't have good nutritious soil. A good way of doing that is to bury a pot beside them. There we go. Put the mulch back. any new guys with us that are wondering about the straw I use the straw as a mulch on all my veg beds and some of my pots just because it helps to keep the moisture in and stops all that moisture evaporating which is great for thirsty little plants like this right that's them so now when I'm watering I water straight into this pot fill it up with the water and that means that it gets in deep right into where those roots are right next so that's my kind of salady type greens. Lamb's lettuce, gems lettuce, cut and come again lettuces, pea shoots, some spinach leaves. I'm toying with the idea of adding some sort of maybe watercressy type thing into this mix, but I've not decided yet, so keep tuned for another video for that one. Now the flip side of things, your cooking greens. Mustard greens I have loved. So we have been growing dragon's tongue mustard and wave mustard or green wave mustard. Absolutely loved them for cooking. But what we did was we decided to try perpetual spinach because, well, the name perpetual gives it away. It's a perennial, so there was no need to keep sowing to grow more crops of that one. Whereas the dragon's tongue and the green wave mustard were bolting and I was having to keep replacing them. So we're trying that just now. The jury is still out on the perpetual spinach. So we'll see how we go, um, but the dragon's tongue mustard and the green wave we did love. So that is a definite permanent kind of through the winter early thing for us. We'll see how we go about space outside, because again it all comes down to space. I might bring it back, but yes, loved it. Now the other thing you guys know we grew loads of in here over winter was pak choy. We loved our pak choy as a kind of cooking green, even though most of ours was actually red. But, you know, you know what I mean about that. And um, I've actually got two lots of pak choy in here now. So again, last month you saw I sowed and got mixed up and just sowed all red um, and didn't sow green when I meant to. However, what happened was we put that out into the beds and within the space of two days, 
it was gone. Now, I think it might have been flea beetles rather than snails, just because it was lots of little holes to start with in the leaves, but then it was completely down to the ground. So I've got some more going in here, um, which really need to go out, but I'm a bit like, because mm, I don't know if they'll survive. So this is going to be one of the big decision crops. Uh, I won't need to water this. Look, it's gone all limp, because uh, that's a bit in the sunshine. So yeah, I need to make a decision on this because... Um, if I put it out and it just gets eaten again, it's obviously one that's not really great for me to be doing. So we'll decide. But that's the green pak choy, which I just think it's beautiful. Um, right, I'm going to put it this way around to remind me to water it when I'm finished filming. Oh, and that's the red pak choy. And again, it needs a good water. But this is the one that you guys all seem to love. All last winter, I had this growing in the greenhouse and you guys kept asking me what the red plant was. Even though you'd all watched me sow it and grow it and everything, but you kept asking. So I'm going to give this... Oh, God, it's awful. This is a really bad example of... It's like, hi, I'm a YouTube gardener. Yeah, so um, water this, guys, but they need to go out. That's the thing. Right, so that is the kind of salad -y greens and my cooking greens. The other thing, spring onions. Let me just tell you how amazing it has been. So I started the spring onions over winter in the greenhouse, brought them on, put them out quite early spring into the beds, and we are now eating so many spring onions. It is awesome, and they are so better than the ones you buy in the shop. So the ones we're currently eating are white Lisbon. Um, we had the winter hardy white Lisbon, which we sowed early and brought on over winter. And then there is just the standard white Lisbon, which are what's going just now. I've got two pots of Ishikuru to put out, which um, spring onion, bunching onion, whatever you want to call it, but apparently these guys don't get bulbs. But this is the first year I've tried them. It was a, it was Steve, as usual. Steve gives me lots of my ideas. I need, you can see how pale they are, though. So these need to get out into the beds as well. Again, it's all about space. So I'm not going to be sowing any more of these this month because I've got loads, but it's another one you can be sowing this month, along with carrots, beetroots, your greens, your salads. You can be growing more of these guys this month. So, um, yes, I recommend White Lisbon. They're doing awesome for me. I want to see what these are like once I get them into the beds. Poor little guys. Need to go out soon. It's this weather. It makes life really difficult. Uh, do, do, do. If I turn this way... Uh, I'll do flowers last, because I know flowers are a specialist thing for a lot of folk. We'll talk about that last. The other thing then, mm -mm -mm. obviously you can see greenhouse is now absolutely chock a full. Peppers on this side are doing awesome. Look at the size of this guy. Um, so obviously I don't need to be doing any more of that stuff. Tomatoes, I've got marmand. Still not certain how this guy's going to be. He had been really poor early in the year, but we'll see. Brad's Atomic, absolutely loving this. It is so fabby, and we've actually eaten our first Brad's Atomic tomato. <gasps> Tastes amazing. It's, this is a staple. Now we're going to grow this again. It is gorgeous. So um, we've just eaten our first Brad. What do we think? Very tasty. They're really good. <laughs> Um, a lot of people have been telling me they think Brad's is really quite a pain in the neck to grow. It's quite a... Um, it's a bit of a prima donna and it just reacts to everything. But we've actually not had any problems yet, so um, fingers crossed we're OK. But totally loving it. I've got heaps of tomatoes down here that aren't right yet, so I'm just waiting. Can't wait. Um, yeah, it's going to be cool. I've also got... You can't see it because the greenhouse is so full. So, with the little grow along with Eli, the dwarf tomatoes, this is the Olapolka, which I had such high hopes for. But what I found, all of them just looked really poorly. You can see how pale they are. I'm just struggling to get them to settle in and start to take the nutrients they need. But, it does have flower trusses. But other folk are telling me those their Olapolka are really quite short and quite bushy, so I'm not sure about this. The rock caption's kind of hidden behind here. He's looking a wee bit better. But again, he's quite tall, got his first trusses. So we're just waiting to see how he does. But one that's very different is the Lata. Check this out. I have to be honest, I was a bit worried about the Lata because he did look the poorest out of all the tomatoes. But he's doing fabby. 
he's got a few trusses on him there. A few trusses, looking good. So, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Uh, in case you're wondering, this is my, it's a pH meter and a moisture meter. So I've got it switched on for the moisture because I'm growing him in a pot. And it's just me being a wee bit nervous because it's been a while since I've grown tomatoes just in a plain pot. So um, we'll just see how that goes. Now, I've also got some of these outside and I just potted them up last week outside. So I had the same issue with... Right, I'm going to try and do this, but as I said, it's very windy, so the sound might be awful. But these are the ones that I have been growing outside. So I potted them up about a week ago and I was really worried. They were looking really poorly, but they have actually come on. Um, you can see the very, very early leaves at the bottom are quite pale, just looking awful, but the ones up at the top are proper dark green, looking much better. So they are looking good. One of the things though, we originally put them over there in front of the greenhouse, but we discovered that that was only getting proper sunlight for about three or four hours a day, which is why we've moved them over here because they get much more sunlight here. And I suppose this is a thing, because this is an experiment, I'm trying to find out where is going to be the best place to grow all of these tomatoes. So that's a good thing about them being in pots. They are movable. Now, one of the other things, in the tomato video I did last week with you guys, um, I was quite surprised that nobody spotted this little guy on the shelf. Um, he basically was a poor... Basically, he was a sucker that I pulled off the Brad's Atomic. Um, and Steve at Greenside Up always goes on about how he plants his suckers, so I thought I'd give it a try. And when I was doing that video, it looked awful. It was only a few days old and it just looked appalling. But you can see he's perked up a bit now. So I'm going to just keep bringing him on because I wasn't expecting to have a spare plant. So, um, yeah. Now, aubergines, I've never updated you on the aubergines. So here we go. Look at this. I've got my very first proper aubergine at the minute. Um, I've got two plants, that one and this one. The plant down here is full of flowers, but no proper fruit yet. That one doesn't have as many flowers on it, but it's got that huge big aubergine. So quite excited. Those are black beauty. It's my very first year trying to grow aubergines, so I can't give you any guidance on whether I think this is a good variety or not. You'll have to stick with me as the year goes on to see. But quite excited because we use a lot of aubergines in our cooking, so that's fabby. Now, and the other big one for this month is... Yeah, you guys, if you follow us, you know this already. It's going to be my beans. I've had palaver with beans. <laughs> So last year, we grew the big, proper climbing green beans, but we found we didn't eat as much of them as we thought we would, which is weird because we eat a lot of green beans. We, we discovered what it is. We like the little fine green beans. So we switched over this year and we're back to growing the little fine dwarf plants um, and we chose Fandango. We had great success with that one before. So we're trying that again this year. However, total nightmare that we're having I just couldn't get any of them to take with the first pass. The second pass, I got one. And then I tried again and I got one more. So I had two. So I put them out in the beds and overnight, one of them's completely, well, no, not completely gone. Something chewed the leaves off of it. Didn't eat the leaves, chewed the leaves off of it and left them on the floor next to the plant with just a stalk. So I'm super behind on my green beans as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to direct sow some green beans out just to see if I can get them to take because it's warmer now. We should be able to be growing them outside in the garden. But I've also, just to cover my bases, I've ordered some plug plants just in case so that I've got backup. Needs must, that's just the way it is. <laughs> So, given that this is a garden and not just an allotment, flowers, because we're doing so awesome this year with that. It's one of the things I normally go a bit overboard on, so I'm really trying to get it controlled this year and not grow too much. It's not exactly going perfect. It's, it's, I'm doing my best. So, um, my main plants that I've been bringing you guys on with is then are my little dwarf sunflowers. 
So not growing any big tall ones this year, but I've got the little Leo multi-headed little small bushy plants again that I loved last year. Um, last year, major issues. They got totally devastated by the slugs and the snails. Got lots of plants out. Lost three plants to the slugs and the snails. Managed to catch a couple when they had been a bit munch, but I've managed to catch them. So basically they're all out now and they've got slug rings around them, the copper rings, to try and deter the snails the best I can. We have real issues with snails in this garden. So, fingers crossed, maybe in a month or so we should see them looking glorious and just awesome. Can't believe I forgot to mention the cosmos and the snapdragons. Now here's the thing. This is the cosmos I didn't pinch out, but you can see I pinched out the snapdragons. So you can see how tall they are. This snapdragon I didn't pinch out. So it's the same as you get with all plants. The one that hasn't been pinched is the first one to bud and potentially flower. These ones are just a little bit behind because they're much shorter, stockier plants. But I have shown you guys this on multiple plants now. It's the same as with the peppers, as with the flowers. Plants all generally work in that same way. So because we pinched these out, we've almost retarded the growing. They will catch up and they'll be amazing. But it's just that thing. The other ones are now big, tall plants. And especially on a windy day like today, there's a risk of them getting broken as they fall over. You can see behind me some of the only foxgloves that are actually flowering this year. But I think that's actually some of last year's. I don't think that's from this year's lot. But yeah, generally, I'm chuffed with the flowers. The other one I do a lot of is the petunias. So we've already got hanging baskets out that I've got petunias in them and I've got the next lot coming on. So I've got things like my little stars and stripes. Here we go. Um, and I've also got big blues here as well. <laughs> um, nothing exciting. They're all at different stages, you can see. Uh, but it's just that, bringing them on so they can go out in baskets, containers and what have you. Um, do, do, do. What else have I got? Yeah, Rudbeckia. So, huh? Rudbeckia. Now, I do love a good Rudbeckia. These um, are my autumn colour because these guys flower and keep going real late into autumn. I only just got these guys potted up a few days ago, I think now. This is Rudbeckia. These guys aren't ready to go out yet, so it's going to take a little bit more of the pot now and intending to. But I don't have space for all of these, so now I get to choose which ones are the ones I keep and bring on and nurture, and which ones get given to the neighbours. So that's what I'm doing, and then getting them potted up into bigger pots. But they're still in the greenhouse. They're going to be in here for a little while yet, because um, as I say, these are going to fill the gaps as other things pass. So that's the idea. Everyone knows about the succession grown thing for your food and fruit and vegetables and things, but for your flowers as well, because they all flower at different times. And when one passes and leaves you a bit of a dull spot or even an empty spot, you can be bringing the next lot on to fill that gap. And that's what these guys are. So yeah, they're in here too. Oh God, it's so good having a greenhouse. I think I'd be lost if I didn't. Is there anything else or is that me? Oh, and I forgot, how could I forget my dahlias? Oh, so chuffed. My little tiny dwarf dahlias this year. They are so small, but so cute. Um, so Doris, as a bit of an update, is looking okay now. Got a wee flower, lovely colour, really, really lovely colour. Loving that little guy. Um, but did get totally munched by snails, so I had to copper ring them. Um, Doris was in that bed one night. The next day after I filmed it for you before, munched but seems to be recovering, fingers crossed. Some in the back bed as well, looking great, and they're just little pops. To me, it's little pops of colour, it's little happy faces. I love them. So yeah, I'm well chuffed. But that's my flowers. So that was sowing and growing with me for the month of June. Now, if all my talk about my plan and my succession planting has piqued your interest and you're thinking about giving it a try, Go and have a wee watch of my video where I actually made my plan. 
and there's a link if you want to download a copy to use for yourself. It just might help you get over that wee hurdle of working out how to do it. So next time, guys, I will give you a review of how I think it's gone using that plan. Till then, see you guys!